Well, hello, I'm John Crockford Hawley. I'm North Somerset's Heritage and Regeneration Champion, and also I chair the Town Council's Museum Committee. And what I'm going to do today is to talk a little about the works of art in Western Museum, with particular reference to the Smith Piggott collection. I suppose the most important person to mention isn't actually uh, somebody who lived in Western, but he is a Smith Piggott. It's Joseph Ruscom Wadham Smith Piggott, there's a, there's a good name for you, who was born in 1890 and died very recently, 1971. He was a pioneer airman, um, very much in those early days of, of air flight, um, rose to be a group captain, very much a hero in the, in the First World War. He earned not only the CBE and the DSO, but also the Croix de Guerre um, from uh, the French president. And in the Second War, as, as a fairly aged uh, participant, he volunteered as a gunner in the RAF. Um, so there, there, there was this group captain operating as a gunner in, in the Second War. His son was unfortunately killed in an air crash in 1947. And Joseph and, and a nephew then decided that they would donate all of the Smith Piggott paintings to the borough of Western Supermare. So the whole collection came across for the benefit of the people of Western. And that's the collection which today you will see either in the museum or in storage at Taunton. And it's in the, what is referred to as the North Somerset collection. It's, it's a really good collection, 30 paintings in all. Um, and it links the, the Smiths of Ashton Court with the Piggots of Brockley Court and Western Manor and also with the, the Provis family and the Wadham. So it's those four families, but mainly known to us as the Smiths and the Piggots, or the Smith Piggots. The paintings, the paintings actually date from the, the 16th century right through to the 20th century. And, and these are in Western Museum. Quite a, many people don't appreciate that we have works of art stretching back right into the, into the 16th century. I, I could go through uh, a tedious list of names, um, but I think I'd, I'd probably be into about the third and you would all have switched off by then. So rather than do that, I'll, I'll concentrate on, on the painters uh, themselves um, and put those into some, some sort of context. Um, the first painter uh, is, is a person called Thomas Hill. Now Thomas Hill lived from 1661 through to 1734. He's got works of art in the in the Bodleian, um, in New College and Christchurch. Uh, that's three locations in Oxford, as well as the British Museum and the Nat and the National Portrait Gallery. Um, he painted a person called George Herbert, who was uh, one time Bishop of Bath and Wells. So, to have works by him um, in our collection is is really good. We've only got one, but nevertheless, we do have a Thomas Hill painting in the museum. And another artist is a person called John Hales. Now John Hales, uh, again, in the 17th century, lived from 1661 until, uh, well, he was active rather as a painter from 1666 to about 1679. And we've got two of his, his pictures. Um, now his claim to fame, apart from our two pictures, is that he also, he was a mate of, of um, Samuel Pepys and, and is actually in, Pepys's diary and he painted a portrait of Pepys and Pepys so liked it he got into another one of Mrs Pepys. So there we have a, a, an artist who has painted Pepys and has two of his works in, in Western Museum. We then have William Armfield Hobday who was active um, end of the 18th century, first part of the, the uh, 19th century and he was, he was very active in, in Bristol. Um, he, he did a lot of work. He painted uh, Jenna. Um, he painted George IV. Uh, he painted some of the Rothschild family. And we have uh, four of his pictures. A couple of them are attributed to him, but let, let, let's, let's just forget that, that little detail. We have four of his works in, um, in the Western Museum collection. Then uh, Thomas Robart, 
B-A-R-T, not Robert, um, Thomas Robart. And um, we've got one of his pictures from about, we think it's about 1812. Um, that's one of the, the Smith Piggott uh, paintings. <clears throat> then a person called Edmund William Andrews. Um, we've got a couple of his paintings. Now, now Andrews was active from about 1860 through to 1911. A couple of his pictures and then another one, um, a lot of these tend to be people, people who have worked either in the West Country or they've gone from here to London or they've come back here from, from London. Um, a couple by an Emmeline Dean. Now, Emmeline Dean was again active at the end of the, the 19th century, right through to the beginning of the, the 20th. And she was a Bath artist and some of her works you will find in Bath's Victoria Art Gallery. And we've got, as I say, two of her pictures in the, in the collection in Western Museum. But the one I've left to, to, to last um, is, is, is our best. Um, this is the work of Thomas Gainsborough. Now, we've got, we've certainly got two genuine Gainsboroughs in, in Western Museum. We've, we've got one copy. So let, let's say we've got three, but two uh, without any dispute genuine Gainsborough. Now Gainsborough was alive between 1741, died in 1816. Um, a, a very prolific painter. Um, he, he's of that sort of Joshua Reynolds, um, Gainsborough uh, couple who, who were incredibly fashionable as portrait painters. But um, Gainsborough didn't actually like painting portraits. Um, there are lots of lots of families, well-heeled families, who wanted to get Gainsborough to paint them, but he didn't actually like them. And, and he was painting, he was painting a lot in Bath between 1759 and 1774. So that's obviously when the the, the Smiths, the Piggots, would have got hold of him uh, when he was very much based in this area. So, so if you were a local squire and you could get a good portrait painter who was resident in Bath to immortalise you, then, then you were clearly um, in the upper echelons of, of society as very much the, the Smith Piggots wanted to be. Yeah. So there we have Thomas Gainsborough. Um, and there aren't many people, I think, in, in Western who appreciate that in our museum, we do have um, at least two paintings of incredible national importance. We, we, then, we then have um, a sculpture. We, we have a sculpture by Charles Summers. Now, Charles Summers, uh, he, he reached international repute as, as a really good sculptor. But when he was only a teenager, he came to Western to learn some of his trade. Uh, so there is a link between Charles Summers and, and Western. Um, he lived from 1825 till 1878. Uh, and we have one of his works on display in the museum, and that's that's Edward Smith Piggott. Um, it's a really, really good uh, sculpture. There are four, four there, but the one by the one by Summers is well worth seeing. So we we have we have these thirty works of art in Western, and we have many more, but these are the thirty associated with the the Smith Piggott family. 16 of them are by known artists. Um, the remainder are, the rest are known. I suppose it's a bit like if we look at our family photographs from 50 years ago, we might know who some of them are, we might know who took the photographs, but you know, we, all of our cupboards are stuffed full of pictures. We haven't a clue who, who they're, uh, they're of or who, who took them or when they were taken. It would have been just the same with, with those, uh, portrait painters.